Hello everyone, welcome. Let's have a look at the uh, 1E. This is on page uh, 13 in your student's book. This is about phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are verbs that uh, have a preposition with them, but they can have more prepositions, more than one. This is something that will be a part of uh, 1E. Now, usually you have a choice between using a normal verb and a phrasal verb. For example, in exercise uh, 6, you will see that there's a question one. Which famous people do you admire? So admire someone, někoho obdivovat. Admire is one verb, but you can use a phrasal verb for it. You can use uh, more than one word, but the question is, how do I know when to use phrasal verb and how do I know when to use just one verb? When you use only one verb, like admire, then, then it becomes more formal. Pak je to trošku formálnější, zvozilejší. If you use the phrasal verb, then the phrasal verb will become more informal. That means, you know, everyday English, when you speak with friends and so on. So this is the big difference between phrasal verbs and uh, uh, the ordinary verbs. Sometimes uh, there is no other way but using phrasal verbs. Like, for example, the verb wake up. There is no other way to say wake up. So then the phrasal verb is normal, uh, you know, in written language, in spoken language. But then most of the verbs that we know can have the phrasal verb, uh, which looks very different, but it has the same meaning. And then it can have the usual verb that you see usually. Now, you will read an article here. Now that you understand uh, the difference between phrasal verbs and the usual verbs and how to use them. I would like you to read the article number one uh, in exercise one. It's about a movie and explain in your words what is unusual about the main character in your own words, okay? So write some sentences here. And as the title already says, I used to be older. So this can help you a lot in deciding uh, what the main character is all about. Now, read this article here you will find the phrasal verbs that are highlighted here uh, and you need to match them with the meaning here. So for example, to have a good or bad relationship with someone, you need to find the verb or the phrasal verb that has the same idea, okay? So for example, you cannot say signs up for a job. Sign up for a job is not uh, to have a good or bad relationship. So which one would it be here? That's the question for you. So then that's for uh, exercise two. Then in exercise three, this is where you need to work on the theory. So a three part phrasal verb has how many verbs and how many particles. Now, particles are uh, usually the prepositions. So uh, out on, all right? We have a verb, preposition, preposition. Um, then, uh, three fra three part phrasal verbs are transitive or intransitive. When you have uh, intransitive, they have a direct object. My primi permit direct object. That means, let me give you some example. If you say uh, tell, all right, we have the verb tell and we have the verb say. You tell somebody something. Then this is a direct object. You tell somebody, and then you say something, okay? So when you tell somebody something, then we can say this is intransitive because you will need to use direct object, met. But if you want to say something, uh, like say something to somebody, then this will become transitive. That means the object is indirect. transitive. Transitivní a netransitivní slovesa. To znamená, že některá slovesa vyžadují za sebou předmět, že já je nemůžu říct samostatně. Například say, I can say say alone. All right? uh, he, she said no, or he said yes. Okay? I, there is no, there is no um, object. But I cannot say she told yes. That's not okay, because you need an object. Okay? So now, the question is, three part phrasal verbs are transitive or intransitive okay that, that's the question so in other ways do they have a direct object do they need to have an object yes or no 
if they need to have an object then this is uh, transitive all right if they don't need an object then this is intransitive then uh, let's try then uh, uh, see the object always goes now after before or between the two particles so imagine um let me see if i can find some example here uh okay so for example we have put up with uh, benjamin strange uh, condition now can i say something like put it up with or put up it with if i want to uh substitute strange condition i will say it instead can i say or should i say put up with it put it up with or put up it with or what should i say now should it be after before or between the two particles now in questions the, the three parts of the phrasal verbs usually stay together so here you just need to look at this what kind of course did you sign up for so the phrasal verb uh, that has three parts will stay together that's very important now in a dictionary some three part phrasal verbs have a different meaning from similar two part verbs when you look up phrasal verbs in a dictionary, find the correct part of the entry. So here you have to study on your own. You have to check it in the dictionary. And here are very good examples where the phrasal verb can have a very different meaning. For example, look up and look up to somebody. Now, when you look up, when you look something up, let's say, if I tell you, look it up, it means open a dictionary and find the words in a dictionary. But if I say, look up to somebody, then it means you look up at them like this. And that means you want to be like them. You really like them. You want to be like them. Takže k někomu zhlížet, OK? Zatímco look up je něco vyhledat. Vyhledat si nějakou informaci. So you see, it has a very different meaning. Uh, and the same goes for the other here. Get away, get away with, make up, make up for, get up, get up to, and so on. So this is for you to find the meaning in a dictionary and then put the verbs here into the correct place. Okay? And now they can have two or three part th three part phrasal verbs. So this is for you to find out. Afterwards, you go to page 121. And then this is where you find one E, phrasal verbs. And there you will have another box for theory many common phrasal verbs have meanings which you cannot guess or work out from the main verb so they can change a meaning a lot and unfortunately we have to remember most of phrasal verbs they don't really make much sense okay if i only look at the words it doesn't make much sense instead you need to learn them as separate vocabulary items yeah too bad now we have to look at the uh, three and then read the sentences and circle the correct meaning so look at uh, the sentences here from one to six and uh, put the correct answer there. All right. So, for example, she gave up halfway through the London Marathon. If you give something up, you stop doing something or trying. So this would be for B. All right. Now, what about two, three, four, five and six? This is for you. Now, the last exercise here is exercise six. And here you need to use, again, the phrasal verbs from exercises two and four to replace the underlying words. So which famous people do you admire? To admire someone, uh, as I told you before, někoho obdivovat nebo někomu zlížet. And we have already said this uh, just uh, a while back. So uh, this is for you to think about and uh, put the correct uh, phrasal verb from here. All right. Put it, put it over here and uh, complete it. So uh, phrasal verbs, in my opinion, are one of the most difficult things in, in, in English, all right? Even in Czech, uh, we would say vyskočil, zaskočil, přeskočil, uh, and there are so many more, right? Mm, so odskočil a tak dále. So they all change the meaning too, uh, you see? Um, so this is something we really need to learn because usually when people speak English, they often or let's say, usually people would use phrasal verbs rather than admire or enjoy. Admire, you know, would be used more in a formal formal context. 
So that's all. I hope that the instructions are clear and I'm looking forward to seeing your tasks later. So take care.